Millions of people are taking vitamins and supplements over the counter. A lot of diabetics take these vitamins hoping that it can help better control their glucose levels, help lower their glucose levels, prevent complications of diabetes, whether they're afraid of going blind or having diabetic neuropathy. They're taking all these supplements hoping to try to prevent those complications and sometimes to help reduce symptoms that they may have of diabetes. However, what does exactly the ADA have to say about vitamins? What are their thoughts? And what do we know about these vitamins that we're taking? Before we get started, if you are new, please consider subscribing to my channel. Comment below, let me know if you're taking any vitamins and why you're taking them. We know that vitamins and supplements are not FDA regulated. However, if you are taking any vitamins, the number one thing you wanna do is you wanna check your bottle and make sure it has a USP seal on the bottle. If you're not sure what this is, please ask your pharmacist and they can actually help you pick out the ones that meet the standards of the USP. And also remember that the best way to get vitamins and minerals is actually through diet. That is what the ADA recommends. However, when people are deficient in a vitamin, we do recommend over the counter at that point. And we know that eating a well-balanced meal still remains the best way for us to get our vitamins and minerals because we're not really sure if the supplemental form is as beneficial as having a healthy diet is. Here in America, the most common deficiencies are having vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin D, iron, and calcium deficiencies. The best way to know if you're having these deficiencies is actually to have your blood work checked. Some diabetics who are taking certain medications like metformin are more prone to getting deficiencies like B12 deficiency. A lot of my patients who are taking metformin are actually on B12 supplements. They have checked their B12 levels and they have been low. Therefore, a lot of people who are taking metformin for long term should be on B12. And the best way to really know that is to have your blood work checked. As great as supplements and vitamins can be for us, believe it or not, sometimes they can actually interact with our medications. They can have unwanted side effects. Let's dive right into it and let's see what the ADA actually has to say about these most common vitamins and supplements that people tend to take. Number one, we'll start with chromium. We know that a chromium deficiency may lead to high blood sugar levels. However, please be mindful that if you are diagnosed with kidney disease, Chromium supplements might further damage the kidneys or worsen the disease. For that reason, before you start taking chromium, be sure to talk to your doctor. They can check your chromium level and they can actually tell you if this would be something worthwhile for you taking and also being mindful that they may want to monitor your kidneys closely. Taking vitamin E or the herb St. John's wort can actually increase your chance of bleeding, especially if you are taking any blood thinners. You always wanna make sure that you're asking your doctor if taking these supplements is actually a good idea. A lot of people tend to think that supplements or vitamins are actually harmless, but in fact, they can cause a lot of harm and do more damage than good. Another supplement is niacin. A lot of people take niacin hoping that it can help reduce their LDL, which is their bad cholesterol, but actually niacin can increase your fasting glucose levels. So when people start niacin, they will notice their sugar levels, especially in a fasting state, are higher, and they're so confused, not realizing that it's actually their niacin causing it. Therefore, you want to be very mindful of the supplements that you're taking, and you always want to make sure you're discussing this with your provider to make sure that it's actually doing more good than harm. Another common one is B12, and we know that metformin use can actually cause B12 deficiencies, and B12 deficiency can actually make you have symptoms of diabetic neuropathy. So a lot of people will get treated for diabetic neuropathy when they don't have it. In fact, they have B12 deficiency that's causing the numbness or tingling to their feet or their hands. Once we manage the B12 deficiency, those symptoms actually improve. So if you are on metformin or if my patient is on, is on metformin long term, I will normally check their B12 levels and I find out that the B12 level is low. I do recommend starting B12 supplement. Some people take vitamin C and E supplements thinking that it can actually help overcome their diabetes. It can help lower their glucose levels. There's actually no science to back this up uh, and the ADA does recommend holding off on these vitamins until we have more research. What about vitamin D? So there are some studies that shows that people who have higher vitamin D levels actually have a lower chance of having type 2 and type 1 diabetes. 
but the data is kind of mixed. So I normally recommend vitamin D only if the patient has vitamin D deficiency. Otherwise, I normally don't recommend taking vitamin D because the data is just too inconclusive. And what about cinnamon? We know that a lot of people take cinnamon because they are truly convinced that it can help lower their glucose levels. However, according to the ADA, there's actually no evidence to show that cinnamon helps, unfortunately. Now, if you like cinnamon, I do recommend cinnamon is a much better option than adding sugar or other sweeteners to your food. However, it's probably not going to lower your glucose levels. What about alpha lipoic acid, ALA, to reduce pain from diabetic neuropathy? So actually, ALA injections, which are available only in Europe, do improve symptoms of neuropathy in short term. So here in the United States, they do have the ALA supplements. And some people do say that it helps with diabetic neuropathy. Therefore, I normally tell patients to give it a try. But of course, the data is very mixed and the results are very mixed. So I'm not exactly sure if it helps. But if patients feel like the ALA supplements help, then I normally say go for it. And I just continue to monitor the patient closely on a regular basis. All in all, a lot of vitamins and supplements are actually not as helpful as people think they are. And the data is still lacking. If you are planning to start a supplement or a vitamin, make sure to run it by your doctor just to be sure that they are monitoring the things that they need to monitor. Like if you are planning to do the herb St. John Wort and you are on a blood thinner, that increases your chances of bleeding out. And for that reason, that can be extremely dangerous. You always want to make sure that your doctor is aware of all the supplements and vitamins that you may be taking. And they might be totally fine with it, but you don't want to take it and then something bad happens and no one was aware of it. So please comment below, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you all on the next video.